Hi again everyone, I'm on another adventure. This time it's the Gower Coastal Park. If you fancy a walk with views like this, or this, and this, and these, and this, then the Gower Coastal Path might be just what you want. Welcome to a rather wet and windy Gower Coastal Path. But it hasn't been like this all the time, believe me. In fact, two days ago when I arrived at Mumbles, it was lovely and warm and sunny. Well, this is a bit different, isn't it? Where's the mountains? Where's the tough terrain? Where's the wilderness? No, nothing like that this time. I'm on a coastal path and I'm in the Mumbles near Swansea. Between you and me, uh, the Mumbles, it's a little bit, um, how can I put this, tired? little bit tatty. Let's hope for, that the rest of the trip now is a bit more scenic. This first uh, section of the path is quite well, uh, how can I say, manicured. Uh, a very nice path, concrete path, because we go past a, a couple of very popular bays, firstly Langland and then Caswell Bay. So this is a very popular path, there's benches every 50 metres or so and really nice views down south over the Bristol Channel. So it's a really nice sort of gentle introduction. I do need to, to come clean a bit, this is not my first time on the Gower. Uh, back in the day, many years ago, I wasted a couple of years at Swansea University. So I came out to the Gower quite a bit, doing a bit of rock climbing and things like that. So for me, it's, uh, although it's been a while, uh, it's still uh, revisiting old haunts a little bit, if you like. So I was dissing the mumbles and how it looked a little bit scruffy. Well, we've gone around the corner and now in Langland and all of a sudden the hedges are very neatly clipped and there's some really nice houses with big picture windows. Very nice. leaving Langland Bay behind now. It's a really nice bay but it's very uh, neat and clean and uh, manicured is the right word I think. Looking forward to getting out onto the cliffs again. I don't believe it there's a few, is it eight benches all together here. Yeah. I mean I know the view is nice but really eight of them. <laughs> Nine, ten. So this is Caswell Bay. It's a nice spot on a day like this. Kind of a spot that makes you want to linger and drink a can of fizzy pop. Oh, that's a bit better now. Now we've left the uh, slightly more developed areas of Langland Bay and Caswell Bay behind. It's uh, a bit more peaceful and the paths uh, much less well trodden, it's not concrete anymore, it's just a, like a normal footpath. And that first section from Mumbles to Caswell is, is a good introduction and the path's great. And I couldn't believe quite how many ice cream shacks I passed along the way. So, but it was uh, a lot of people around even on a sort of late midweek afternoon. Now, back when I was at university and 
the pressure of impending exams and things was getting a bit much. One time I uh, just got my sleeping bag and booby bag out and walked around to here, somewhere near here, and uh, spent the night um, sleeping in the booby bag on the top of the cliffs. I think it worked well for me and I guess looking back it was kind of a precursor of my inspiration and desire to go out wild camping you know, ever since. Well, it looks like that's the end of the nice uh, coastal beachy bit for a bit. And now we've got a bit of a climb up onto the top of head. So we're going to be a bit higher above the sea now. But unfortunately that involves a bit of a steep pull up through the woods. <laughs> well that climb was worth it. Look at that. Amazing. Really, really good views. It feels great to be up here now because there's a breeze <laughs> cooling me off. Uh, I was out of the wind for the last mile or so and uh, it's getting a bit close and I've spied uh, Three Cliffs Bay now which is a very welcome sight because that was my sort of target for today. Three Cliffs Bay and uh, I've done a bit of rock climbing on those cliffs back in the day when I didn't know any better. Possibly the most photographed beach in Wales. The iconic three cliffs and the cave underneath. We're walking along under shingles or stone bank. And my uh, campsite's somewhere on top of that hill. But it would be, wouldn't it? We're heading for those uh, stepping stones over the river now. It's a really cool maze uh, made out of uh, stones. It's taken hours. Oh, that's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> that's fantastic. Find another word, Charles. And on the uh, high, uh, up on the skyline there is uh, castle ruins. So that's Pennard Castle ruins. And then uh, our next point of interest is these stepping stones across the river. Eleven and a half miles later, <laughs> at about half past six, I've arrived uh, at the campsite I'm staying at tonight. Well, that's the tent pitched. I'm trying a few slightly different ideas on it this time around and it seems to be working well so far. I just had a nice shower. I've got to say this is an excellent campsite. If I ran a campsite this is how I'd want it to be. I've got my own spot. I've even got my own fresh water supply. Nice big area. I've got my own picnic table and uh, fire pit thingy if I want it. It's peaceful. There's lovely views. The people are really nice. Oh, this is excellent. I, I, I think I might bring the family here because it's a top place. Oh, I'm a bit bleary eyed this morning, but I had a good night's sleep. Uh, that's the main thing. Nice rested. Uh, 
This morning, though, the weather has uh, taken a total change. Um, and it's uh, breezy uh, with occasional sort of light showers. So right now, this isn't seeming like one of my best ever ideas. I've woken up to quite a wet morning and it seems to have got even rainier now that I'm just about to hit the trail. The weather forecast, for what it's worth, says it's going to be like this for the next hour or two really, but hopefully brightening up uh, this afternoon as the fronts pass over. Well, I dropped all the way down from the campsites to the beach, which was nice. And lo and behold, I've now got to climb all the way back up again. Not so nice. Well, it's still raining. Oh, I know it's going to be most of the morning. And uh, so far the path's been quite sheltered actually by trees have been going through woods and stuff. So it hasn't been too bad. I've got down to beach level at Oxwich Bay. I'm hoping I can stop off for a warming coffee or something in the cafe at the bay. Right, well, uh, this is a bit of a turn up for the looks. So uh, there was a lovely bridge there, but it's not there anymore. So uh, I've got to cross over this, this here river. And it looks like there's a narrow spot up here where I might be able to hop over with lightness of foot and a one single bound or something like that anyway. This could be entertaining. There's some people having a wild camp on the beach up here. Looks a bit miserable. <laughs> right, this looks like the best bet. Hmm. Gonna get my walking poles out and give it a go. I made it! Right, now gonna tick off a mile or two along the beach, head down, let's get going. Leaving the long sweep of Oxwich Bay behind now. And this is a really nice, sheltered, peaceful path through the woods towards the uh, little church. And it stopped raining. Hurrah! getting used to this on this path there are uh, quite steep climbs as the path sort of uh, weaves up and down above cliffs and has to go inland to get around a rocky sections of the coast <sighs> so you get a short sharp climb and then the other side the corresponding descent weaving my way up through the trees, up a steep path, but it's got steps, so it's not so bad. <sighs> Certainly warming me up. This is really nice walking, this um, very pretty woods. Occasionally I get a strong smell of wild garlic, and um, 
immediately on my left down below the sound of the waves gently lapping at the rocks. This is really pleasant, really pleasant. The rain stopped so that helps and it's a very clear good path so happy days. Amazing what a, a nice stop with a good cup of coffee can do for your spirits isn't it? Having said that it's gone uphill now. What's going on here? Ah, dang it! Come out of the woodland and rounded the headland and I'm back in the wind and the rain. <laughs> back in all the weather. I didn't realise how much those woods were giving good shelter. A bit more sort of wild and stormy feel to it. And a few nice dark clouds up there. Well, I might be tempting fate here and speaking too soon, but this section of the path is, is really nice. I can see a few showers heading my way, but it looks like they're quite small squalls, if you like. And it's a lovely section of path, and we've got a nice view down of the, onto the waves crashing onto the rocks on my left. A bit of a spring in my step, so. Yeah, I'm enjoying this now. This is this is excellent. this is just right actually. Not too hot, not wet and cold. Goldilocks walking weather, would you say? <laughs> I'm feeling quite strong walking today. I think uh, I did a pretty uh, tough three days in the Breaking Beacons uh, a week or two ago and yesterday's walk sort of woke up as well so I'm feeling feeling in good shape today <laughs> it's not often I can say that so I need to just celebrate that fact obviously you know the walking I'm doing the preparation is paying off I suppose oh <laughs> and it's raining again <laughs> That's Port Island behind me. Uh, nice enough spot and uh, unusually there are two fish and chip shops next to each other. So if you want fish and chips, probably a good place to look. Now I think that this next section of the path between Port Island and uh, Ross City and Worms Head is one of the highlights of the trail because um, it's particularly, I don't know, perhaps wild compared to the rest rugged and dramatic so quite looking forward to it. Nice uh, monument there at the uh, top of the head and uh, looks like the next half mile of path is gently sloping and grassy just what I like. Taking my waterproofs off. <laughs> I was beginning to get really hot uh, with that shell layer on, but I'm very aware that it's asking for trouble, isn't it? And I can see that it's uh, 
I can't see the horizon so there's going to be probably some more showers on the way so anyway we'll see you Finally, rounded the corner and made it to Rossley Beach. What an amazing place this is! Look at it, it's huge, huge sweep of sand. That last uh, the section from Port Island round to Rossley it's quite a slog actually. Perhaps I'm getting old and tired. There's uh, lots of little ups and downs, which on their own aren't much, but cumulatively they're quite, quite tiring. So uh, Rossetti's got lots of cafes and options for food and drink. So I took the opportunity to grab a jacket potato and a drink and get my water bladder filled up. So now I can uh, relax for the evening. I've had food, I've got plenty of water, so I can enjoy this last section for today along the beach and see if we can find somebody to pitch at the other top end. Right, so here we are. Ross City Beach. And my destination is way over there in the haze on the horizon. This place is just surreal. It's huge. Absolutely massive. And there's hardly anyone around. Wow! And the place I'm camping is way up there and look in the haze at the end of the beach. So that headland over there is our worm's head. Some people say it looks like a dragon. And uh, you can uh, cross through it at low tide and explore on it. Got to be careful though because when the tide comes in it gets cut off and you'll be marooned. I keep looking back behind me to see, see if I'm halfway yet. It's very difficult to tell. The only way I can really judge it is by the uh, size of the people in the distance. And by comparing the people behind me and the people in front of me, I can safely say I am not halfway yet. <laughs> oh, look at all these jellyfish. I just trod on one. Ew! <laughs> really slimy. <laughs> well, I think I'm nearly at the end of the beach. Wow! And uh, it has been uh, almost like a surreal walking experience for so long over such a empty uh, beach. Crazy. You know that feeling when uh, you've been walking all walking all day. It's been a long day, quite uh, taxing at times. So you're quite tired, and uh, the evening's starting to draw on. Maybe about half past six, for example. And you really could do with a spot to pitch a tent. I think, I think I've found my spot for tonight. Um, it's actually quite a stunning place. Um, but uh, it can be seen uh, quite easily from the path. So I'm gonna give it 10 minutes to make sure nobody else is walking on the footpath. Excellent, I got the tent pitched and <laughs> it's got a stunning view, so possibly worth the wait. Another 100 meters it would have been a bit sketchy but um, that's me pitch it's a well past seven o'clock so nice and late and I'm gonna make sure I've, I've, I'm out of here promptly in the morning 
So today had everything. It had uh, rain and uh, warm breeze. It had uh, beaches, it had cliff tops, it had woodland, it had dunes, uh, it had villages, tea shops, fish and chips, yeah, the lot. So it was a, although it was a long day, there was a huge amount of variety, so it went really quickly. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, I'm talking quite quietly. I don't know why, because there's no one around, but perhaps it's because it's quite early in the morning. Uh, it's before seven and um, I'm packing up the tent ready to uh, make an early start because um, the old uh, pitch late leave early sort of uh, attitude so well, I was going to have breakfast on the trail but there's a lovely bench here so I might just sit here and have my breakfast to be honest but I want to pack the tent away first so the view I had from the tent last night over the bay in the sea Pretty strong argument for wild camping on the coast, isn't it? All packed up. Absolutely no trace I was here. Just a bit of dry grass from under the tent. And it's time to say goodbye to this beautiful, beautiful place to camp. And hit the trail. Time for a situation report. Completed the first mile of the day. The path is no longer a squidgy sand, but it's nice firm grass so that's that good news uh, less good is that the weather you can tell they've got the hood up it's um it's one of those times when you think should i put the hood of the cagoule up or not it's just a very fine drizzle that's intermittent Turned another corner now and uh, walking away from the sea and the beach and now we've got a, a beautiful uh, really nice peaceful area of old dunes with a bit of pine woodland as we're cutting through uh, towards uh, more of the estuary it's a good path and actually uh, although it is a bit drizzly and damp it's it's not too bad at all it's quite nice and fresh to, to be fair and the path is uh well like it is always through dunes it's a bit sandy so my my trail runners are getting caked in sand but uh most of the time it's fine and it's a nice clear path and uh, every turn i take there's a different sort of vista ahead of me a different character of that section of coast so it's a really nice route this because there's so much sort of variety. The normal route of the path over the seawall section apparently is closed and we've got a bit of a diversion that's going to add a little bit of distance. I can see now why that section of the path is closed. The path along the seawall, there's a blooming great hole in it. So that wouldn't be much fun. Just come up to a bird watching hide. Let's go inside and check it out. I was just thinking what a nice stream this is. Potentially a water source for wild camping somewhere around here then I looked at the map and there's a sewage works a few hundred yards upstream so hmm, perhaps not anyway I think we've got something interesting coming up by the looks of things to help we need to get over this little stream and I think there are some stepping stones here they are la, la, la. well these are excellent stepping stones look huge Nice and grippy on top. Now 
Uh, normally, my path would inevitably be the one that goes steep uphill. But no, <laughs> for once, we're sticking low and going around the side of these woods. These salt marshes are absolutely huge. They just go for miles. It's gone really dark and gloomy. Now I'm in these woods, really impenetrable. Probably doesn't show it up on the camera. Oh, it's that smell of wild garlic again. I guess I should go over the stile. Well, that was a very pleasant short break in Flanridian. Nice pub, just a bit of grub. Um, in theory, I should be well set for the next uh, afternoon's walking. <laughs> Trouble is, you get a bit comfy in a nice comfy pub, don't you? And it takes a bit of, uh, what's the word for it? Motivation and some willpower and self-discipline to get back on the trail again. Especially when it looks like the rain's gonna be coming back soon. Rain's come back, uh, a bit heavier, a bit of a fresher breeze. It's got a more permanent feel to it. So uh, it hoods up, I'm just plodding on, ticking off the miles. I thought that this was just a pile of gravel, and that's kind of what it looks like until you look closely. It's actually small shells. It turns out it's a seafood factory behind and that's the, the the shells that I left behind so that's it I've made it to the gate that's the end of the path at Crofty thanks for coming with me thanks for uh, joining me on this walk along the Gawa coastal path hope you've enjoyed it We've everything haven't we We've had sunshine rain beaches cliffs fields woodland the lot <laughs>